Hii ni umuhimu. Umuhimu wake tunahudumia jamii. Nafsi. Na mimi binafsi napata kusomesha watoto kodi za nyumba, huduma za afya na kadhalika. Sasa hivi takriban kama miaka mitano. Eh kwangu ni muhimu kwa sababu ndio inaoniendelesha maisha yangu. Unaona? Kwa sababu ninasomesha kwa biashara hii. Ali Kamunale is harvesting trees on government land. Trees that will feed Dar es Salaam's growing demand for charcoal. This is good work. I have my own house. I have bought furniture. I have a wife too. Access to reliable and affordable energy remains a challenge for many people in sub-Saharan Africa. The vast majority of households rely on wood fuels to satisfy their daily energy needs, especially cooking. In the fast-growing urban areas, charcoal is often the single largest source of energy, as it is easy to transport, distribute and store. This situation also applies to Tanzania and its East African neighbors. In Dar es Salaam, one of the fastest-growing cities in Africa, the number of households relying on charcoal increased from 47% to 71% between 2001 and 2007. The total annual value of the charcoal sector is estimated at $350 million. In comparison, coffee and tea contribute only $105 million to the national economy. 28,000 bags of charcoal are consumed daily in Dar es Salaam, enough wood to fill 6,000 Olympic-sized pools in a year. Under current production and consumption patterns, it is estimated that a 1% increase in urbanization leads to a 14% increase in charcoal consumption. At the moment, Dar es Salaam grows at about 4% annually, and its population will double in less than 20 years. The rate and intensity of production of charcoal is increasing, while the raw material for charcoaling is diminishing. So I don't think with time that it will be sustainable. The web of charcoal sellers, transporters and producers includes hundreds of thousands of Tanzanians. Charcoal for sale in Dar is traded in big wholesale markets. Entire communities have sprung up beside it. Shop catering to truck drivers, loaders, and customers. The ones who are doing business in the market are about 50 people. Others depend on their existence, more than 200 people. Before, there was nothing here. The market brought in other businesses. It's an activity that involves a lot of people, and a lot of people are making money out of it. So addressing or uh, burning charcoal is not an easy solution or the uh, immediate solution. The bulk of charcoal comes into Dar from nearby surrounding areas like Kisarawe and Kibaha, but also as far away as from Tabora, 750 kilometers away. It comes in trucks, trains, and on the pedals of overloaded bike transporters. It'll take these men up to two days to transport and unload their charcoal. It feeds my family. I've been transporting charcoal for six years now. Income from producing and trading charcoal is important for private households to earn a living. Tax revenues collected from the charcoal trade often constitute the most important source of revenues to many communities and district administration. Charcoal's appeal to consumers is simple. It is readily available and investment in cooking equipment is low. Shoppers can buy small quantities for the little cash they have to get them through the next meal and until they get some more cash. You know, you want to cook a breakfast, you can go and get one tin of charcoal, cook, then the business is over. Then during lunch, you can go and get another tin during dinner. So, simple. <laughs> While the economic opportunities of the charcoal sector are strong, Governance, law enforcement, and other regulatory activities are weak. Unregulated and unregistered activities in charcoal production and use 
lead to an estimated revenue loss of $100 million a year. I know the charcoal comes from trees in various districts and it is bad for the environment. But we need it. What can we do? No one in Tanzania thinks the demand for charcoal will fall anytime soon. In the fact that we are still talking of 90% of the primary energy coming from biomass, it will take us a number of years to really come up with minimum or minimum contribution of charcoal or wood-based energy. Even an improved enforcement of existing laws and regulations will not make charcoal production more sustainable because the current system for issuing permits and licenses is not based on sustainable management plans. The only difference between legally and illegally produced charcoal is the loss of revenue for the government. Since the expectation is that the use of food fuels will remain high, reforming the charcoal sector is crucial to achieve long-term energy security and sustainability. But the equation for success is complicated, with many stakeholders voicing competing interests. One possible solution is through participatory forest management, an approach that was successfully piloted in Tanzania. Then charcoal production in natural forests will be part of community-developed and enforced management plans. But those forests in the village land, we are trying to encourage the communities to have their own forest in the strategy of the participatory forest management. By doing so, those forests will be well managed because they will be having their management plan and their utilization plan and they will do zonation of how you are going to utilize it. So charcoal can be having one of the zone to be utilized according to the to the, to the harvesting plant. If households and communities truly own forests, the production of charcoal gives them a direct financial value, making conversion of forests to agriculture less attractive. In addition to promoting sustainable management and natural forests, the production of wood for charcoal needs to be increased. Providing incentives to establish sustainable plantations gives community and rural households additional income sources. So we have to increase the production side by conserving the forest, maintaining the, 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 the existing one, planting trees, expanding the, 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 the area covered by forest, by planting trees. That's one side. But the other side is now to use effective stove or energy saving stoves for charcoal. Traditional or unimproved stoves use more charcoal and produce less heat than improved stoves. While the basic material for stoves is scrap metal, improved stoves have a clay liner that makes them more efficient. The disadvantage is that improved stoves cost more than traditional ones and don't last as long. There are stoves with, which are having liners. You reduce the amount of charcoal for 50%. I like the new stove. The old stove used too much charcoal. In addition to improved stoves, better technology is also available to charcoal producers, resulting in up to 25% of more charcoal produced from a given amount of wood. By growing the trees like they, what they are doing here, by producing charcoal in an improved killing way, and by using the charcoal in an improved stoves, it promises us that we can have a sustainable charcoal in Tanzania. Another way to reduce the dependence on charcoal is by promoting a further diversification of energy sources. Like charcoal, these must be reliable and readily available, and consumers should be able to buy them according to their cash availability. So charcoal will be used for many years to come, but slowly we have to kind of promote these alternative energy to kind of uh, balance between the charcoal users and the alternative uh, energy users, uh, like LPG at the briquettes, as I said. But charcoal will be there to stay for many, many years. So far, these alternative fuels only make up a fraction of the market. We've been in this uh, business of making charcoal briquettes for the past three years, and I think collectively, well, if we look at our own capacity, it's, it doesn't even reach 0.01% of the total market share. 
For LPG, the low market share stems from the cost for cooking equipment and fuel, which makes it less competitive with charcoal. Uh, one of the major barriers has been costs. To make alternative energy sources like LPG more attractive to consumers, one option for the government is to lower taxes on these fuels. If the government will consider to make taxes on alternative sources of energy to be low, probably they can shift from charcoal to other sources of energy like kerosene, gas, other things of that nature. But reducing taxes on alternative fuels means sacrificing much-needed government revenue and discouraging the use of charcoal, which provides income and employment for hundreds of thousands of the poor. And I think the best way is to make charcoal more costly or more costly reflective. And the government, on the, government, on the energy policy side, we are promoting the so-called a full cost reflective tariff. So if the energy based on biomass is also being paid at full cost recovery, then it will be a disincentive to those who are producing it in an inefficient way. The key advantage of this approach would be that there is no distinction between legal and illegal charcoal, only the difference between sustainable and unsustainable charcoal. With an innovative and modern governance framework in place, unsustainably produced charcoal would become more expensive than sustainably produced charcoal. That we, if we have a, a bigger section of uh, middle class in this country that can afford to buy better fuels, to, 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 to buy equipment that can, they can use in their kitchen, the, the cleaner fuel, then that, that will help reducing charcoal dependence. But in, in, uh, as I said, it's, it's a question of reviewing the energy policy, reviewing the socioeconomics on, that are related to charcoal for, for charcoal for consumption to be reduced. The latest proposal affecting this policy discussion comes from the International Dialogue on Climate Change. Countries like Tanzania could receive payments for successfully reducing their carbon emissions by reducing deforestation and forest degradation. Many people have tried to do this before, but the big difference now is that there is actually a monetary incentive for leaving the trees standing. In the past, there has been no way of making money from the forest except by chopping it down. Looking forward, two questions remain. On one hand, could Tanzania quickly reduce its dependence on charcoal with its rapidly growing population? Even if an increasing share of households turns to alternative energy, millions of people in urban areas are likely to continue depending on charcoal to satisfy their energy needs. On the other hand, should Tanzania even reduce its dependence on charcoal, given that a sustainable charcoal sector could be a vibrant and modernized part of the country's economy, contributing to economic development, poverty alleviation, and increased government revenues? The truth is that for the next 20 years and beyond, people, especially urban dwellers, will continue to depend on charcoal for their cooking needs. Without a sustainable charcoal production, the price will keep on going up, which will affect even the consumers, because it will be keeping up, up and up. And uh, as I told you, is the number one household energy. So. I think there must be an intervention. No matter what this intervention looks like, listening to the views and opinions of those most affected and incorporating their input will be critical for the success of the solution.